Hello, this is a short video about some insights of Vividino slash Formbot Troidon, direct drive upgrade after six months of continuous use. Both options presented here are based on the design of Mr. Lawrence. This ST electric compartment with the Duet Wi-Fi clone. Wiring is done properly, ground is connected properly. I just added some ground cable for the heat bed and improved the cooling of the solid state relay. So this is the Vividino Direct Drive Extruder, which is easy to check up. And you should check it up for some possible quality issues. We have the drive gears, which are cloned from the famous Bontech extruder. The use of clones is to be expected for the price ask. The cloned drive gears are definitely not bad but not as good as the original. It is suggested to upgrade them to the original drive gears if you are planning to print TPU. That is the LDO NEMA 14 motor, made for Vividino. Here we have the extruder housing, SLS printed, so it looks from inside. And here we are at the first problem, you can take out the whole motion unit including the bearings without forced pulling. The bearings should hold the spider shaft in position which it won't in this case. This could cause reliability problems in the future since the bearings might work out their space in the printed housing. What you should do prior to mounting the extruder unit is to take off the motor and fix the extruder without motor with nuts instead of the motor. Then you take a long piece of filament and let it run a number of times manually along its dedicated filament path. That's the entrance. That's the exit of the filament. I will show that later in detail. And this is the extruder, designed by the gentleman Jake and Tom, also following Mr. Lawrence's original orbiter design. One of its major advantages to the Vividino extruder is that the mount to the printer of this extruder is a lot better than the mount of Vividino's. Vividino's DDE is to be mounted on just two screws via an extra bracket, while the design of Jake and Tom has a solid mount with four screws exactly on the position where the Bowden E3DV6 clone print head was mounted saving weight for the extra bracket again. Tom and Jake's extruder can be disassembled easily as well. As another big difference you see that here you cannot pull out the spider shaft, not even with extreme pulling forces. That housing is properly printed with low tolerances as you would expect it for a perfect reliable solution. I really suggest you to insert some filament here and pull it backwards forwards multiple times to remove remaining stains here. Additionally, if there is something wrong you will feel it during pulling the filament prior to mounting it to the machine, which might save you lots of time and words. Just to show you in detail the problem of the Chinese extruder. Right after pulling out the spider shaft, the first bearing fell out, this should be placed here on this position. Then you take off the drive gear and here you have the second bearing which should be here in this position without falling apart. I guess. To compare, here is the extruder designed by Tom and Jake. Everything fits perfectly. Thanks to this it's a bit fiddlier to assemble, but I am sure it will last longer and work better. Both the purchase links you will find in the description of this video. Another point is that Vividino's design is more user-friendly for left-handers, while this design is easier to insert filament for right-handers. Well a small point anyhow. The much bigger advantage is that this extruder sits much better on its position on the printer without wobbling around. And here that's the way you should mount the extruder and the hot end on the extruder. In between of hot end and extruder is the mount for the old E3DV6 on the bracket of the x-axis linear rail block. It is beneficial if you mount it this way, so that this part of the heat block is looking towards you. The fan mount and the fan ducts are slided onto the old fan housing. 
The design permits the use of two radial fans type 5015 as part cooling fans and one 4010 axial fan for the heat break cooling of the hot end.